What are we going to read today? Listen or read along with Miss Dupont. Find some place cozy and let's dive into one of our books in our collection about bullying. The Juice Box Bully: Empowering Kids to Stand Up for Others by Bob Sorensen, Maria Desmondi, illustrations by Kim Shaw, and forward by Jim Fay. The Juice Box Bully. As Pete stood in front of his new class, Mr. Peltzer announced, "Let's welcome Pete to our team. Pete, you will be sitting behind Ralph." Settling into his seat, Pete pulled his hat down over his head so that only his eyes could be seen. Turning around, Ralph warned him, "They don't allow hats in class here." "You're not my mother," snarled Pete. After giving an assignment, Mr. Peltzer walked around the class and quietly asked Pete to remove his hat. Once he walked away, Pete poked Ralph. "Thanks a lot," he growled. Later that day at recess, Pete didn't ask to join the soccer game. Instead, he watched. "Hi, Pete," Ralph said. Did you, do you want to get into the game? Not with those nerds," Pete replied. "I don't like those kids." "What do you want to do?" asked Ralph. Pete smiled spitefully. "Let's steal the ball. We're bigger than them. We could have our own game." <laughs> "I don't think so," answered Ralph. "That's not how we do things around here." "Then I'll do it myself," taunted Pete. "If you're so afraid." Pete ran over to the field and yelled, "Pass it to me!" When David passed the soccer ball, Pete grabbed it and ran off the field. "What's going on?" shouted David. Pete didn't answer. He ran faster and faster, then turned and waved the ball in the air. At first, the kids just stood there. Then they huddled together before walking over to Pete. Ruby and Lucy led the way. "I know you're new around here, but what are you doing?" asked Ruby. "I'm playing with the soccer ball." Pete snapped. "Think you're going to take it away from me?" Ruby didn't argue, nor did she threaten Pete. Instead, she softly but firmly explained, "It's your first day here, so there's no way that you can know this. In Mr. Peltzer's class, we made a promise. We promised to take care of ourselves, each other, and our classroom, and to solve problems peacefully. We promised that in this class." No one would stand by and accept bad behavior. When someone acts hurtfully, we all speak up. We want you to be a member of the class and to make the same promise. Dumb rules, dumb promises. Throwing the ball to the ground, Pete walked away. The next day, Pete ate alone. When he finished lunch, the kids raced out of the lunchroom while Pete trailed behind. Ruby ran up to Pete and asked. Do you want to play soccer today? I don't play with nerds. Okie dokie, Ruby replied. Hey, Ruby, Pete called after her. Ruby stopped and turned. Nice shirt, Pete complimented. Then he squirted his juice box right at her. You are so mean, she shrieked at him. I'll tell everyone how mean you are. You won't have any friends here. By now, Ralph, David, and some others had come up to them. Ruby, I won't let you do that. Ralph said clearly. Remember our promise. I don't want to remember the promise. Look what he did. We'll ignore him forever until he leaves the school and goes back to his old school. Ruby demanded. Ralph walked between Ruby and Pete. We're not going to do this, Ruby. I know you're angry. You can tell Mr. Peltzer if you want, but we are not going to let you treat Pete like this. And We won't put up with his be- bad behavior either. Ruby stomped away, leaving Pete and Ralph behind. No one's ever done that before, Pete said. Why did you stand up for me? I've been in your shoes, and I learned being a bully doesn't work. And I'm not a bystander, Ralph said. I don't stand by and let mean things happen. Besides, Ruby is my friend, and you shouldn't have ruined her shirt. Won't the other kids be mad at you for sticking up for me? Pete asked. No way. They all made the same promise. We talked about it for a long time with Mr. Peltzer, and every kid here tries to keep that promise. At my old school, I got picked on all the time. Pete said. Everybody just let it happen, so I started to tease kids before they could be mean to me. Ralph replied. 
We decided that when somebody tries to be a bully, no one will stand by and let it happen. We speak up or we ask for help from an adult, but we, don't, we won't be bystanders to bad behavior. The bell rang, and it was time to go back to class. They hate me. They'll never let me play with them, Pete said. Before Ralph could answer, David, Lucy, and Ruby came toward them. I'm sorry about what I said, Ruby apologized. I can't believe I forgot the reason why we made the promise. If we can remember to stand up for each other, school is a lot more fun. Wow, the kids here are way different than at my other school, Pete said. Maybe I'll give this promise thing a try. Great, let's go talk to Mr. Peltzer, said Ruby. Hey, Ruby, sorry about your shirt, Pete added. Ruby smiled. No worries, I kind of like the new look. Everyone laughed as Pete and Ruby led the way into class. Promise, I will speak up instead of acting as a bystander. I choose to participate in activities that don't involve teasing. I forgive others if they make poor choices. I model good behavior. I accept others for their differences. I include others in group situations. I will talk to an adult when there is a problem I cannot manage on my own. I am powerful in making a difference in my school. By making the promise to stand up against bad behavior, we can put an end to bullying. Stand up. I hope you enjoyed the story today. Join us again on the Mandy Troy Storytime channel. We have more books about bullying. Some questions to think about. What was Pete characters like at the beginning of the story? What was Pete's character like at the end of the story and how what made Pete's character change from the beginning of the story to the end of the story share a good book with someone 